Hi, I'm Matt from Hoboken Horology, and today I'd like to go into a short brief history on the Speedmaster Man on the Moon, and also I'd like to mention this uh, NASA jacket I just recently acquired. <laughs> This jacket was just handed down to me from my grandmother, and she told me it was her father's. So my great-grandfather flew for NASA. He flew astronauts uh, during training missions. And it's really uh, interesting when I, when I got it. I, didn't, I did not expect it to look the way it does. I, I thought it would be a black jacket with patches sewn on, or maybe a, like more of a flight jacket. But this is basically um, almost the same as the bomber jacket that I wear that I recently bought. Uh, bomber jackets are kind of uh, in right now. A lot of people are wearing them. Actually, people are wearing bomber jackets that have NASA um, logos and NASA uh, patches on them. But this is an authentic one. This is actually worn by my uh, great-grandfather, and uh, it was flown during NASA-sanctioned uh, missions. So it's pretty interesting, uh, the history. And uh, I don't know much about the, the stories behind my great-grandfather and what he did um, for NASA exactly. So I'm going to be interested to hear more, and when I do, I will uh, make a video about it. It's pretty interesting, you know, there's no pockets inside. There's two clipped pockets outside, um, and there's a, an arm pocket that has the pen and pencil holders on the side. But uh, it's definitely thicker than my other jacket, and it's funny because it's designed and it looks like a lighter jacket, but it's a heavier, it's definitely a heavier jacket, and it's, it is, it, by design, it's meant to keep you warm. Um, I'm very curious. I've never seen anything like this until it was handed down to me. Um, but in, in respect to that, I'd like to go over a quick thing on the uh, Speedmaster. And I'd like to go over um, a short introduction to the Speedmaster origin story. Now, it's arguably the... The, the Speedmaster arguably has the most... Um, the, the richest history. I mean, the sub has a, a very rich history. Um, the Daytona maybe has kind of a, a, rich, a more rich history, but... The, the Speedmaster is a watch that we constantly find out new in, information on, and there's so much to discuss about the Speedmaster, from it being the first watch worn on the moon, to um, one of the Speedmasters having its crystal pop off while in, in zero gravity. There's so many interesting historical um, pieces of information out there about the Speedmaster. So, just to give a brief summary on the origin, um, a NASA engineer bought several watches from a local watch dealer in uh, Houston, Texas, and apparently they sent out um, to multiple companies for more information on the watches. They wanted more specific details of the watches, about the watches, um, for their testing, and only four um, companies responded back. So that was Omega, of course, Long Jeans, Hamilton, and Rolex. Now, I actually heard a story, and I can't find the reference material on this, but I heard a story that a lot of the NASA engineers were actually gunning for Rolex, and they wanted Rolex to have the unofficial contract of the NASA watch. I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the people working for NASA really liked Rolex. They really wanted Rolex to be the official NASA watch. So... Um, but, of course, in 1965, the Omega Speedmaster was the only watch to pass all tests and is NASA, um, NASA flight qualified by NASA for all NASA missions. So, on July 20th, 1969, Buzz Aldrin was the first person to wear the, the Speedmaster on the moon. Uh, it wasn't Neil Armstrong, uh, though he was the first man to walk on the moon. He left his on board because the clock had failed on board on the ship, so he had left his on the shuttle so that they would have a reference to the, to the time. So NASA chose the um, Speedmaster Man on the Moon, and if we go into this article from Monochrome Watches, they're a great website, they have a, a, amazing articles, they do a breakdown way better than I ever could on the Speedmaster history. 
So on this article, they have some of the testing. Um, it says 11 different tests, including high pressure, high temperature tests, 48 hours at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 Celsius, um, 71 Celsius, um, by 30 minutes at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Low temperature testing, um, temperature, te pressure, humidity testing. Now humidity is actually the cause of a lot of chronographs to fail because of the pushers and there's so many areas on chronograph where uh, humidity can get in and cause damage, especially if it's enough, if it's humid enough. Um, oxygen, atmosphere, shock absorbent, decompression, high pressure, vibration, three cycles, acoustic noise, 130 decimals. Uh, see, that's really interesting because you think of a, of a ship taking off, uh, the vibration that you would have to, um, that you would have to withstand and how, how dangerous it can be, especially for any mechanical component that relies on a balance that's very specific, that beats so many times per minute. It's really interesting, but they have to do all of these tests um, to qualify it for space. So here's a picture. Um, this is a great photo of uh, Buzz Aldrin, and he's wearing a, uh, he's wearing a uh, Speedmaster on the uh, Velcro. Uh, this is very iconic. His jacket actually looks a little bit like the one I'm wearing right now. It has the, uh, the arm pockets, he's got patches on it, he's got the NASA patch. It's funny, through the side arm pocket, he's putting uh, sunglasses, he's got his uh, West Point ring. I, I, it's so cool that, like, you, you have to imagine being an engineer, like, you don't usually wear a lot of things on your, you don't wear a lot of rings on your fingers and things like that. People take off their wedding rings because they're constantly banging their hands around working on machines and things. And it's, it's great that um, in a lot of pictures of Buzz Aldrin, you always see him wearing uh, his uh, class ring. I believe that was a West Point ring. Uh, I could be mistaken, but I, I believe that's from West Point. So it's pretty interesting. Here he is looking at the camera. He's got the headset on. Um, we go through. And this is Apollo 11 uh, photos. Here's a, a very iconic photo. And if we go into an enlargement of this of that photo, here it is, the Speedmaster man on the moon, worn on the moon, um, on the Velcro strap. You can get replicas of the Velcro strap. I, I bought a replica of the Velcro strap, but mine I felt like was a little off. Omega makes a replica. I think Omega's is probably the closest you can get, or, or at least one of the better ones. They're hard to find a really good replica. They're, every replica is a little different. They like change something for one reason or another. They, they're difficult to find a, a very a, a good one, but uh, this is really interesting. The, the photos are great. Um, and you know, I, I just wanna end, I wanna bring this video to a close by talking a little bit about Buzz Aldrin and this article that was on uh, Hadinki that is great. Uh, it's really short. I. It, it, it's kind of the problem with a lot of the watch articles like there'll be like a two-hour press conference but the the auto, the article will be like two paragraphs or something like that and it's like I kind of wish there was so much more information or like you could see more um, for that that's what we have YouTube for you know you can go and try to find video recordings of the conferences or things like that so if we go down this article is uh, talking about Buzz Aldrin and what he's wearing of course, he's got that ring on again, and he's got a lot of bracelets on. And now this is really interesting. Um, when I read this article, he is wearing a, uh, a newer Speedmaster. Now you might be asking me, why isn't he wearing the one from Apollo 11? That watch is apparently missing. Uh, the, from what I remember, the story is, is it went missing and it's never been found. So if someone was to find that watch, it would be the most valuable Speedmaster ever made, I'm sure. Um, but if we go through, he's wearing this very interesting uh, double watch here. He basically has a watch bracelet where it's, instead of having a clasp, it has another, um, or it, it has a short couple of links. He has a watch head, and then he's got probably a clasp down here. But it, it's interesting, what he's wearing is, a, it's an old DeVille, and on the other side of it, I think it's the X-33 Skywalker. Uh, let's see if we can find the Skywalker. Is it written in the article? No, it's not. 
Yeah. One of the comments says it's an X33. People recognize it. But it's not officially said in the article that it's an X33. Um, the Skywalker, um, and it, the Skywalker, I'll put an image on the screen right now, is the current uh, pilot's watch. I believe there was another one at Basel World that was like a bit odd. Um, I didn't make a video about that yet, I'd like to. Um, but the Skywalker X33 is definitely on my buy list. It's very expensive. I, I well, it's not very expensive, but it's expensive for for a quartz for a high precision quartz watch. Uh, it's hard for me to buy something like the X33 when at that price point you can. There's so many options out there. Um, but the X33 is definitely on my list. It is the current astronaut watch. If you were going to Mars tomorrow, you'd be wearing an X33, or maybe a Breitling like B50 cockpit or something like that. But I doubt it. I think the X33, it's designed for astronauts in mind. You have mission timers, you have elapsed time timers, you have all these alarms, they have a special compartment under the watch to make the alarm uh, sound louder. Really, really interesting watch. Uh, I would love to own one. Um, that being said though, the Speedmaster um, is the, the watch that was worn on the moon. It's really interesting that Omega has stayed very close to this watch and they still produce it today. So hopefully you learned something or you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, I definitely enjoyed making it. I will definitely write an update on the NASA jacket if I can get any stories or hear any more information about it and about my great grandfather who flew for NASA. But uh, it's interesting because the Speedmaster has such a rich history, and we can I couldn't even come close to covering how much information there is on this watch. But thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, keep your eyes open for my other videos coming out soon. Uh, thank you for watching.